So there's really not a lot of things that's covering the Tensor G5. Except for this article that I found that I wanted to share with you guys in this quick video. And it kind of gives us an idea of what to expect with the Google Tensor G5. Now that the processor is manufactured by TSMC rather than the Samsung Foundry. So this article, apparently they obtained um, some benchmark scores for the Tensor G5 and compared it to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, uh, which is pretty interesting. So, you know, the summary of this, which, you know, I'll have the link in the description for you guys to read for yourself, but there's the summary on it. Uh, Geekbench is a CPU test. The Tensor G5 scored a two... A 2,276 in a single core, while the 8 Gen 3 achieved 2,183. Um, and then, yeah, so that's the single. So let's see what the actual scores are here. And all right, so here we go. Single core, like I just said, 2,276 for the Tensor G5. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is a 2,183. But the multi multi-core score... 6,173 for the Tensor G5 and then 6,434 for the 8 Gen 3. So on the multi-core side, uh, the 8 Gen 3, you know, scores higher, but on the single core, it scores lower. So, um, you know, when you just kind of uh, think about it here, right, the Tensor G5 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and 2-2 benchmark scores. Um, so the overall score for the G5 uh 1,140,286 compared to uh 2,087,159 uh the CPU for the G5 is 3 uh, 313,500 the 8 Gen 3 is 440,975 the GPU score is 394,695 on the Tensor G5 and then we got a 8 860,385 on the HN3. Uh, for memory, the memory is uh, 246,571 for the G5 and 427,798. And then for the UX, we got 185,520 for the Tensor G5 and then 358,001 for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So those are N22 benchmark scores. When we look, you know, basically at, at the tech comparisons, uh, the process node, it's a TSMC's 3 nanometer, that's a N3E, whereas the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is TSMC's 4 nanometer. Uh, you got an 8 core ARM Cortex CPU with the G5, an 8 core Cryo CPU for the 8 Gen 3. Um, here are the CPU cores. So, starting with the G5, you got one Cortex X4, uh, which is at 3.78 gigahertz. We got five Cortex A725s at 3.05 gigahertz. We got two Cortex A520s clocked at 2.25 gigahertz now when you look at the other side of the spectrum and you look at uh snapdragon 8 gen 3 they got one cortex x4 clocked at 3.3 gigahertz three cortex a720s clocked at 3.2 gigahertz two cortex a720s clocked at three point well three gigahertz and then two cortex a520s at 2.3 so um yeah, it's pretty interesting how they have three of the Cortex A720s uh, clocked at 3.2 gigahertz and then the other two clocked at three gigahertz only. Um, but there you have it for the CPU, the GPU. It looks like that the Tensor is using uh, Imagination Technologies DXT48 1536 GPU and with no ray tracing. And then with the uh, 8 Gen 3, it uses the Adreno 750 GPU. For storage of memory, you got UFS 4.0 with LP DDR5X uh, memory. And then for the 8 Gen 3, you have UFS 4.0 LP DDR5X. So it's the same memory um, up to 4,800 megahertz is uh, for the storage of memory. Uh, NPU, new Google, new Google Edge TPU uh, for the G5. Hexagon NPU runs AI modals up to... Uh, 10B parameters for the NPU. So um, ISP 
for the G5 new ISP shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second. And then with the HN3, um, cognitive ISP triple 18 bit ISPs up to 200 megapixel photo capture. And <clears throat> this is where things get pretty interesting. So they're still continuing to use a Samsung modem. So the modem in the uh, Pixel 10s is going to be the Samsung Exynos 5400 5G modem. That's a sub six gigahertz 5G band support with the uh, 8 Gen 3 from Snap, you know, from Qualcomm basically. It's the X75 5G modem, peak download speeds at 10 gigabits per second, peak upload speeds at 3.5 gigabits per second. And then for connectivity on the Tensor G5, it's Wi Fi 6E, Wi Fi 7, and Bluetooth 6.0. With the 8 Gen 3, it's Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4. Um, so that pretty much, in a nutshell, kind of gives us an idea of what we can expect with the Tensor G5. Now, with the end to do benchmarks, basically, literally putting the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 as a clear winner over the G5. But then you look at uh, the Geekbench scores where, you know, the Tensor G5 did just a slight bit better on the single core. Um, and not too far behind on the multi-core leads me to believe that there's going to be some noticeable differences as far as performance with the Tensor G5. Um, does it mean that it's going to be marginally um, different between the 8 Gen 3 and the G5? I don't think so. I think this time around, we're actually going to see a Tensor processor that is pretty solid uh, when it comes down to performance and those types of things. Um, and again, benchmark scores don't really tell the tell as far as user experience, okay? It gives you an idea of what to think about when it comes down to these things. But at the end of the day, what really matters most is user experience. How does it perform in your hand when you're doing tasks, when you are going through whatever services or apps you're using? That's going to tell the tell if the Tensor G5 is a really good processor or just another semi-decent processor we'll have to see i need to see for myself when i have the phone in hand and i'll be able to tell you guys if i notice any noticeable differences between the previous tensor chips and how they perform versus the g5 which obviously has a new manufacturer even though the modem is still being used by samsung which some people may not like